All right, let's look at our question. We've now done the male system and we're now going to do the female system. So it says the diagram represents endocrine gland A, all right? And the events that take place during in the ovary during the menstruation cycle. Now, please, people, you have to remember that your menstruation cycle is, is it is from the start, okay, on day one, all the way through to day 28, okay? And how does all of this work? It is all controlled by hormones. So, and it all starts with the pituitary gland. Okay, the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland secretes follicle stimulating hormone. And this hormone here that's going to cause this to happen here is, is LH which is luteinizing hormone. Now let's do our labels quickly, okay? B is your graphian follicle, okay? Graphian's got two A's, so graphian follicle, all right? And what is the graphian follicle's two jobs? One is it contains the ovum, and that little ovum is here, Okay, so when it's ready, that little ovum is going to be released. This process here is ovulation. Okay, that's the release of this ovum into the, the, the fallopian tubes. But the graphene follicle's main job, apart from carrying the little ovum, is to release estrogen. And that's the first of the female hormones. Okay, then D is the corpus luteum okay corpus luteum so this graphian follicle here is going to burst and release the little egg cell and then it develops into the corpus luteum and this little guy here this little e is called your primary follicle that's the little follicle that starts out, and it's here that we're going to have meiosis occurring. All right, and then the corpus luteum, where the graphene follicle releases estrogen, the corpus luteum releases progesterone. Okay, I'm going to explain all these things to you just now. So I'm going to show you a nice way of remembering it. So identify gland A, we've done that. Gland A was the pituitary. Okay, process C was ovulation. Uh, structure B was the graphene follicle. Okay, and structure D was the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum. Alrighty, now. Name the hormone responsible for process C, I've already told you, is luteinizing hormone and we can just write LH, you don't even have to write luteinizing hormone, but just in case you don't know how to spell it, it is luteinizing hormone. Okay, LH is perfect. Right, then says state the effect of estrogen on the level uh, on the estrogen levels in the blood if gland a stops producing follicle stimulating hormone okay now just think about it a releases follicle stimulating hormone which causes the graphene follicle to develop which then releases estrogen so if there is no fh then the, fol the graphene follicle will not be developed and your estrogen level is going to decrease substantially. So what is the effect? The estrogen level will decrease. Because follicle stimulating hormone makes the graphene follicle which makes estrogen. Does that make sense? Guys and girls, does that make sense? Lower follicle stimulating hormone and your graphene follicle is now going to have an issue so you're not going to have or you're going to have less estrogen. Alrighty, now last one. 
is to say a woman is given medication uh, with a high concentration of progesterone. Explain the effect of this medication on the ovarian cycle. All right, now remember we've got two cycles. We've got the ovarian cycle, okay, which is what happens in the ovaries until the ovaries release the, uh, the ovule, ready for fertilization. And we have the uterine cycle, which is the increasing in the size of the uterus, so it gets ready for implantation. And then when implantation doesn't happen, so fertilization doesn't occur, that, that endometrium has to tear away and get ready for the next, uh, the next cycle. All right, so if a woman's given this medication, okay, she's lots of progesterone, what's going to happen? The ovarian cycle is going to be an issue. So if we have high progesterone level, it inhibits um, the secretion of follicle-stimulating follic hormone. All right, pituitary gland does that. Okay, so you're going to inhibit the secretion of follicle-stimulating hormone by the pituitary gland. Therefore, no follicles will develop. Okay, and therefore there will be no ovulation. Okay, easy, easy, easy. Now, an ovariotomy is a term used to describe the surgical removal of ovaries. So you're going to cut those ovaries out. Explain why a female who has undergone an oviot uh, ovariotomy will not continue to menstruate. People, use your common sense. Okay, so you've got ovaries are removed. Okay, removed. Therefore, what's going to happen? No follicles will develop. Okay, if no follicles develop, what's going to happen? Therefore, no Estrogen, okay, will be produced. Why? The follicles produce estrogen. So if the ovaries aren't there, they're not going to make follicles. If the no follicles, they're not going to make estrogen. Okay, so then the endometrium won't thicken for implantation, okay, and therefore will not need to break down and be discharged during menstruation. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Listen, you've got, do you, what, mm, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, look here guys and girls. Okay, we have the pituitary gland. And I'm going to lose lots of abbreviations here because it's a lot to get through to you and we're running out of time. So the pituitary releases follicle stimulating hormone. Okay, what does the follicle stimulating hormone do? It causes the development of the primary follicle. And that primary follicle is then going to develop into the graphian follicle. Okay, with ovum. Okay, because that ovum sits inside the graphian follicle. Now what happens? Graphian follicle releases estrogen. Okay, estrogen has two jobs. One, it prepares the endometrium. So the endometrium starts to thicken. Okay, and what else does estrogen do? Estrogen stimulates the pituitary to release 
luteinizing hormone. Okay, now we've got this luteinizing hormone. When we get to day 14, we have a maximum level of estrogen, all right, in the blood. And luteinizing hormone around day 14 causes ovulation, all right? And with ovulation, we now have the ovum, and that little ovum is ready for fertilization. Okay, now the luteinizing hormone goes along and what does it do? It controls the development of um, the corpus luteum from the graphian follicle. Oh, ma, 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 the graphian follicle. So, it's the, corpus, it's the luteinizing hormone that makes the graphene follicle develop into the corpus luteum. So, and, and then it stops, the graphene follicle stops um, producing estrogen. Therefore, the level decreases. Okay, but what also happens here is the corpus luteum is now going to release progesterone. Okay, what does progesterone do? It inhibits follicle stimulating hormone from being released by the pituitary and it preps, so this is one, two, it preps and maintains the endometrium. Okay, almost, almost, almost finished. Sure, I'm running out of time. So now, look at this. What happens then is if there is no fertilization, okay, no fertilization takes place, what happens then? Your corpus luteum degenerates, okay, and therefore no progesterone because it's the corpus luteum that produces the progesterone and therefore you have a decrease in the level. And that decrease in the level will stop inhibiting follicle stimulating hormone and it's going to cause the endometrium to break and menstruation takes place and then the whole story starts again and the pituitary is going to release more follicle stimulating hormone people if you remember what i've just done here and you can go over it you have got it